Imagine if you could just and then they would just appear like Lately, there has been a lot of noise around Claude Code skills. I have spent a lot of time testing some of these out, and I have also built some myself. But the truth is that it, there is only a handful that has really stuck with me. And this work tree skill that I'm going to show you today, that's one that I keep coming back to every single day. The hardest part about AI coding is not to get the AI to write the code. It's not even to get AI to validate the code and to self-test it. Typically, when you work with AI, you work in one chat, one context at the time sequentially. But the next evolution of this is starting to do things in parallel, in multiple instances, multiple environments, remotely, locally. Yeah, you name it. And many of you are probably already doing this or doing something like that as part of your workflow. And when you work with agents in parallel or remotely, you're always switching between contexts, you're switching between environments, you're switching between terminals and work trees. And that is exactly the cloud code skill that I built and that I personally use every single day. It manages parallel development environments with natural language. So you can just talk to it and you can ask it things like spin up a work tree for this, create the work tree with 10 ports for this microservice, clean it up now when I'm done. And it handles everything else for you. So it stores everything in a local registry, you have a config where you can configure which terminal you use, which shell you use. So yeah, let's dig into it. I'll show you exactly how I use this. So we can get started by just asking Cloud Code, please create three new work trees for us. We want to create one for feature one, one for feature two, and one for feature three. So if we just send this off now to Cloud Code, you can see here that it's initiating the skill and let this run and I'll come back when it's done. So while this is running here in the background, I can show you briefly here what the skill is doing. So like any other skill, we have our skill.md in here. We have the description that tells Cloud Code when to use it. So it's to create and manage and clean up Git work trees with Cloud Code agents across all projects. Use this skill when the user says create work trees, spin up work trees, new work trees, and so on and so on. So yeah, really this skill handles anything around work trees and especially locally, but there's also a cool integration to one of my remote tools. And yeah, here we just have the entire process of what is happening. You can now see also that the work tree creation is done and you can see that it's not only creates my work trees, it also starts cloud code inside of each work tree. We're tracking it for the work tree here. I also have something here about which model I'm using, the branch and the work tree. This also starts cloud code in bypass permission mode, which is really neat. But yeah, if you just continue this skill, there's nothing really special here. It just explains to cloud code how to manage work trees, how to keep track of everything and so on. If you're interested, you can read through this yourself. Now we can manage this in our config file. This is my configuration. You can configure this in many other ways. For me, I'm using Ghosty as my terminal. I'm using Fish for my shell. I have an alias for my cloud command. So I'm using CC. So if I want to start up cloud code shell with bypass permission mode, the default here is cloud dangerous to skip permission. So if you don't have or an alias here, just run it out of the box with dangerous skip permission mode. You can also allocate your default work trees. So if you have the main project that you're working on, maybe it requires five ports, maybe it requires 10 ports. So you can configure that here. You can also configure your port pool here. Then you want to set your work tree base. Where do you want work trees to be created on your system? I create all of my work trees in a temp work trees, and it doesn't matter which project is related to all of them go into here. And then we have a registry where a cloud code keeps track of everything that is going on. And then I also have some extra copy directories that I usually want it to include. So I want it to include the agents directory and I want it to include the environment example directory. 
or file. So here you can add things, like if you have things in your clone target that you want to include that maybe is Git ignored, you can include it here. Whenever a work is created, Claude code runs, npm install, pip install, uv, sync, anything that's needed to get your project up and running, Claude code will run no matter what the project is. And you can see here that it tells me now that all of our workers are created. We can see the port range, we can see the path, we can see the task. Now, if we open our registry file here, we can see what we keep track of. This is not the workers we have created. These are workers that I have running in other projects. So I have my remote coding agent project here. It has an ID so we can track it. It has a repo path. It has a feature branch, a slug. It also tracks when it's created, if it's validated, when it was launched. So these are not tracked here at the moment. It also has a PR number. So if there is a PR related to this work tree, it will be tracked here as well. So we can easily track if it has a GitHub relation. But we can just say here, please run the status and check what work trees we have open and list them and their PR numbers. So we can see here, I have several, I have a lot of work trees running at the moment. So we can see, I will probably get a list here of everything that I have running across my system, not only related to this project. So that is what makes this really neat that it doesn't only track the things that are open in your project that you're working in. You can also use your cloud code instance here to manage work trees running in another project because you might be working on parallel projects both locally and remotely. So that's really neat here to have this uh, tracking. And here we can see the different the other ones that I have running. Now there seems to be some issue with the uh, PR tracking here because I know that there are PRs for at least some of these that is not being tracked here at the moment. But yeah, we have here some of the scripts we have running. So we have an allocate port script. So this is what Cloud Code uses to allocate the ports. We have a cleanup. We have the launch agents, which is what Cloud Code uses to open your terminal and your system to register and release ports and so on. Now, this currently is not working for Windows. So if you are a Windows user and you want to test this out, I would really like you to reach out to me because I do not have a Windows machine and I have the working version for Windows, but I have no way of testing it. So if you want to test it for me on Windows before I release it, that would be highly appreciated. So please reach out to my email address and I'll get a copy to you so that you can test it before I release it. Okay, great. So what we can do more here, we can just tell Cloud Code here to please clean up the skill test work trees. And what it will do here, it will just run the cleanup and it will release the ports that we were using. So the ports will go back into the pool and everything will be back to its normal state before we run anything here. But yeah, really neat. You can see I have a lot of work trees running. All of these, my terminals here are different work trees running. If I wanted to start working on something here, of course, I could just start working on a new feature. If I have a spec, I would just run the spec and so on. So yeah, I hope this helps you and shows you what is possible that you can do with work trees. If you are interested in how I use this day to day on a real project, I have been working on a video series where I'm planning to build a project from scratch using all of my parallel methodologies. I also using my spec driven development and my system. So through that series, I would be sharing everything about how I build, why I build it this way, how I work with things in parallel how I manage things when there are merge conflicts and so on. It's very rare that I run into merge conflicts, but when I do, it's actually quite easy to resolve them, even though I run things in parallel. Git keeps track of everything, and I just use a slash command to decide what to do with the conflict. But yeah, more on that in another video. So now, if you want to see more of this type of content, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.